Grade 7 math, number 6.2b, 1 as a coefficient or the lonely variable. Our little x here says he's not lonely. He says he has an invisible friend right next to him. I don't see anybody. Do you? Every variable has a coefficient, a number in front of it, even if it appears to be by itself. In 3x, the 3 is the coefficient and the x is the variable. If this variable were to leave, that 3 would be a standalone number and he wouldn't be a coefficient anymore. This 3x means 3 times some number that we don't know. When we see an x by itself, or an a, or a y, or a p, or whatever the variable is, if it's by itself, it's got an invisible 1 coefficient in front of it. Every single one of them. When we see x equals 4, it's really an invisible 1 x equals 4. It means 1 times x. Just as this means 3 times x, this would mean 1 times x. Well, we don't need to do 1 times x. We can see there's 1x. And if x is equal to 4, we don't need to say 1 times 4 equals 4. So we don't put the 1. We just use the x. When there's more than 1, then we start putting a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or a negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. But if it's a negative or a positive, we don't put that invisible 1 there. See? We understand that 1 times a number equals that number, so we know the 1 is there. And we can use that 1, that invisible 1, to our advantage in solving some equations in the future. We just don't need to write it. But it does help us solve. If we have 7x equals 14, as we learned in the last video, this is multiplication, and the inverse operation of multiplication is division. So to get this x by itself, to solve for x, to isolate it, we can divide both sides by this 7. That'll get rid of this 7. Well, we know that when the numerator and denominator is the same, it creates a 1. That makes this 1x. So now, we divide this by, side by 7 and get a 2, and we know that 1x equals 2. See? That way we were able to isolate and get rid of the, se the, the x and get rid of the 7. See? So it's actually an invisible 1 in front of that. We just don't need to write it. All right. We also understand the distributive property and how a number outside the parentheses is multiplied by the numbers inside. When we see this, we know it means 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4. Or if it's a variable, it's 2 times x plus 2 times 4. We multiply each one that's on the inside of the parentheses. See, it becomes 2 times x plus 2 times 4. Well, we can also distribute an invisible 1 when there's a negative sign by itself outside of parentheses. Yep, there's another invisible 1. You might see a problem like this, negative and then a 3 plus 4 inside of parentheses. Or it could even be a variable. But we imagine it as a negative 1 and then the 3 and the 4 in the parentheses. And we can distribute this negative 1 to each of these. We, we multiply the invisible negative 1 to the 3 and to the 4, to each one of them, just as if there were some other number here. And it would become negative 1 times 3, see, negative 1 times 3 plus negative 1 times 4. And we can solve negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, and negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. They have like signs, and we're adding them, so it's negative 7. See? So there's an invisible 1 right here. When you see a negative sign right up against the parentheses, imagine it as a negative 1, okay? So whenever you see a lonely variable, whatever the variable is, if there's no coefficient, it really has an invisible 1 in front of it, and that can help us solve equations. And when we see a lonely negative sign, in front of parentheses, it really has an invisible 1 in between it and the parentheses. We could even put our invisible 1 in front of that x and say negative 1 times 1x and negative 1 times 6. And it would be negative x plus negative 6. See? Because we distributed each one of them. We just don't write the 1 because we don't have to. We know it's there. We can see there's just 1x, right? So, I hope that was helpful. I hope that you now understand about that invisible one. And when we 
isolate a variable like this, how that one helps us solve it, okay? If you'd like to support Joanne's school, you can go to patreon.com and become a monthly patron for a dollar a month. And if you like my videos, hit the like button so I know that I'm making some progress and that these videos are helpful. It's my only way of knowing is when I see the like button get hit, okay? I'll see you next video. Keep your chin up. You'll be fine. Bye.